Yo, yo! Here we are in Krakow, catch the flavor. In this episode, we're gonna have an interview with the legend, B-Boy Storm, the uh, historian of urban dance culture. So, check it out. Nice one. Break to teach. I think one thing that is very, very important is that um, when you're teaching, <laughs> people need to recognize that a principle always comes before technology. What I'm trying to say with this is like the idea needs to be developed before any technology is developed, before any movement is developed. Like there is no movement without an idea, right? So the, the real foundation of anything within the culture is always the idea first. So when you're teaching and you want to teach efficiently, then you have to let the people that are supposed to copy or, 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 or build on what you're trying to teach, they have to understand the idea first. So it's always, I would say, instead of just letting them follow whatever you're doing, whatever movement, then they only learn what to do, right? then if they follow a little bit more and you explain a little bit further, then they realize how to do it. But only then when you talk and you explain them the idea, then they understand why they do it. So the why should be the focal point on any kind of teaching, on any kind of class, so that people understand the real message of it all right away, so that after the class they don't really need you as a teacher anymore and they can do their homework by themselves. <laughs> It really depends how you how you look at a class. Right? I mean, every class has a, a structure the way you mentioned it. Every class has a dramaturgic arch. There should be a beginning, a middle part, and an end in every class. It's very important to have that. Also, for feedback reasons, it's really important. But uh, much more important, I think, is that you structure a class in the way on how your students are standing, if you know your students. So, if this is the teacher, then right in front of the teachers should be the master students. Let it be four, five, six, maybe ten, depends on how big the class is. Let it be two master students that stand right in front of the teacher, instead of in front of the master. So now the teacher has his master students that already know how to do most of the stuff. So now the people behind the master students, they see the teacher and the master students. So now it's split in three. So even though you see a difference between the master and the two master students, you also find out where you can make the differences within certain concepts. So you don't have to exactly look like your master, but you can also look like your master students. And sometimes you find out in which ways you could kind of like be creative and find your own certain ways in doing moves or whatever idea you develop. Um, where you can can get more subjective with whatever it is yeah so and then from there okay let's just say black belts brown belts blue belts and the more they go to the back the more they will be the beginners right um, in our society and I don't know why a lot of times I'm supposed to teach class especially workshops and I have the weakest students in the front most of the time, children that have no idea about what I'm saying because they don't even speak English, like once I'm teaching in a foreign country. And that bears the problem that now me as the master that's supposed to teach everybody, I see the people that don't know anything. So most of my time is wasted on people they push to the front, right? So you have these little kids where now these little kids, one day somebody will tell them, hey, you're not a kid anymore, you gotta go to the back now. And they won't be able to understand it, right? So now, if the kids are coming from the back, and for them it would be an achievement to go to the next line when they get better, to go to the next line when they get better, to go to the next line, it's much better for their psychology than to put them all the way in the front so that they understand everything, right? They understand everything, where as a matter of fact, you're talking to people that should go to elementary school, but you have a professor or you have a master 
that is like so advanced that now he has to compromise everything he does. He has to compromise it down to such a level where it's way overworked, way overworked. So when you put them to the back, they can rave off of small things, small little things on the side. They don't need to understand everything. If they go home with only one or two things and they can train on that, that's fine. But you want the master students to be in the front so the master students can spread it further to the black belts. Then the black belts spread it further to the brown belts and everybody else. Like that, you have everything in check. So I think that's something very, very important on how to, uh, on how to structure a class. I don't know whether it's gonna happen soon or not so soon. Uh, I think we, we have a big chance, yeah? When I'm looking at the development in hip hop, um, problem is that I see mostly in, in most Western countries, I mean, they kind of like pushed music and sports out of the curriculum anyway. It's always the first things that are gonna be canceled. If you try to tell people where we're gonna cancel math, or we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna cancel any kind of language, then the parents are gonna go on the barricades and they're gonna say, hey, what are you gonna do with our children? We want them to learn something, right? But if it's about music and sports, they're always the first things to suffer, right? So we will see. But uh, I think right now we're pretty successful with what we're doing. Um, I think people see more and more how valuable the things are that we're teaching, especially when it comes to society and how people can work together. I think that's something very important, but also when I'm looking at the, the different dance styles or even everything in hip-hop, when you look at creativity and how people could develop themselves yeah, on a personal level, I think uh, uh, if our society has uh, more and more key positions available for people that have a say and can articulate it well, then uh, the sooner that's going to come, the more it will going to happen. I can only talk about myself here. For me, it was always important to read, to inform myself, get any kind of information from anywhere. Um, I always looked at the universe as a whole. Yeah, so for me, uh, also, I would never draw a line about hip hop. I would not be able to say where hip hop starts, where hip hop stops. Hip hop to me is a lifestyle and the deeper you dig into it or the, the more you live it, the more you will understand it, then there will still be people, trust me, there will be people that will be saying, this guy's from Germany, he only started in 83, how can he be hip hop, how can he talk about this? I'm not from New York, I'm not from the Bronx and uh, looking at Wittgenstein and, and his, um, they call it the, the uh, is a resemblance effect, right? So the further you are away from the prototype, the prototype comes from the South Bronx, the further you are away from the prototype, the less you will have a chance uh, to be accepted within the culture or the less you will be accepted within these brackets of whatever you may call it. But since I've been acknowledged by a lot of the people from New York, and since I've been living hip hop for most of my life, um, I guess I'm accepted, right? So uh, I understand that you asked me that question. I think it's a more ontology, uh, ontologic question. It's about being as it is. Is it important to read? Is it important to inform yourself? And is it important to leave something for the future generations? And for me personally, again, when I'm reading books, when I'm getting these informations, for me, the most important part about it um, was always there were people before us that most of the thoughts we think, they were thought over before. And reading on Plato, reading on great thinkers, reading on philosophy, it's like you're talking to great, great people, like having a conversation with these guys and they want to tell you something. And most of the people these days, and funny enough, especially hip hoppers, uh, they tend to not look into books. And I think it's a big problem. So the more you read for yourself, I think the more you will understand also how important it is to leave something written for the afterworld so that people understand how you were thinking at a certain time. And it's definitely something that we need in hip hop. Most of it is oral history, 
there's not much written down right now, not yet, but uh, in the future there's definitely more to come. At the same time, we also need to be very careful that our culture is not getting too, um, what can I say, uh, intellectualized, yeah? So uh, let it be what it is. People should talk about that. Time witness, all good. Write some reports. Talk about hip hop jam here, talk about back in the days, talk about this, talk about that. What matters is what happened at a particular time, at a particular moment. Um, so that we have, at the end of the day, we have, have more time witnesses, that we have more document about what really happened when and how. That's what's really important right now. Intellectualizing doesn't bring us too far because that means that most of the people don't want to put work into it anymore. And yes, it might start here, but still, everybody has to put work into it. It's our entire hip hop society is based on uh, meritocracy. It means the people that know how to do things best are always the people that would be asked. So if you want to write something, if you want to do something, if you want to document anything, go to the people that know their craft. That's very important. To a people in his mid-30s, there's a book that I just read, it's called Sapiens. It's a very nice book, it's nicely written, very, very well written. Um, it has a very scientific approach. It doesn't mean, you know, that everything that is written in that book, it doesn't mean that it's written in stone and uh, that you have to believe on what, what's written in there, but it's a, it's a very nice approach and it shows us uh, of where human, human, development is today so I think that's that's something very nice right now another book that I would recommend to everybody that wants to get into hip-hop the book is called Homo Ludens the book is about the development of culture in play it means that everything that we have in culture developed out of play and he describes that very well and on the first 30 to 40 pages after that he describes the different games or the different plays more and more so it's getting a bit more boring or he's getting more into detail but the first 30 to 40 pages are amazing it's amazing it really shows you that with most of the things that we take serious in our life that when you realize that everything started with play then you go like yeah let me keep on playing and let me be creative a little bit more with everything that i'm doing and it's it changes your entire approach uh, to life as it is so ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna catch the flavor right now in krakow my name is storm from battle squad and uh, a big shout out to break to teach i hope you're going to check out the channel yeah even though you're not going to read a book you're going to watch the videos right peace <laughs>